What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Thank you for clicking onto this reaction. I hope you're looking forward to it just as much as I am. If you haven't already, head over to the content creators page. That link is in the description box down below. If you haven't already and you're enjoying our content, you know what you need to do. You need to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but we're gonna jump straight into this one. Battle of Kerastes 1596 part three. Hasberg coalition versus the Ottoman Empire. Let's see how much of a fiasco this is. Having fought the Ottoman army to a stalemate on October 25th, and with darkness falling, the Christian War Council unanimously agreed upon a plan for the following day. Hoping to replicate right. the What's actions of October 24th on a larger scale, they would once again allow the Ottomans to cross the stream. They knew that there would only be enough space for a small portion of the massive army to deploy for battle. The Christians planned to split their army into two battle groups. Okay. The first battle group would deploy with its back against the camp and with the Kachi stream protecting its right flank. In doing so, they would draw the Ottoman army towards the Christian side of the stream, at first allowing several thousand to cross. They would then quickly surge forward and overwhelm these units, whose only avenue of retreat would have been back into their own troops, who would still... Okay, so it sounds like a good plan on paper let's see how it's uh operated and actually uh yeah actually done they'll be in the process of fording the stream in the ensuing confusion the task of the second battle group would be to flank around through the northern passage That's only if and strike the disorganized right? ottoman formation from the side simultaneously cutting off their retreat the major encounter had finally come. Pivoting away for a moment, we mm. can examine a historical representation. I know it's an ad, but I actually really do enjoy these uh, these artworks here, just as much as the ones that me and uh, Jack saw in the Napoleonic War series. So I'd definitely like to know where we can sort of see these and which sort of muse museums you can. It is worth mentioning that during the final Allied War Council, the Archduke had suggested that the Christian army would likely have been able to defeat the Ottomans simply by keeping them occupied for a few more days, rather than seek a decisive engagement, mm. believing that the Sultan's host would likely disintegrate on its own. Makes sense. The Austrian Archduke's assessment proved to be correct. Yeah. During the same night, the Ottoman leadership realized that they would have to seek a decisive engagement the following day, as their army was exhausted and running low on provisions. However, instead of allowing their troops to rest for the night, the Ottoman commanders instead agreed to attempt a night crossing. Ooh. Okay. Utilizing the smaller fording points found by the... I mean, I mean... What would I do? What would I do? It's, it's an interesting tactic, and I definitely think it, it would be on the table. Because the other... T the other... Uh, your opponents in this situation aren't going to be expecting a nighttime assault here. So can they catch them off guard? Tatars further south, the army spent the entire night and early morning of October 25th and 26th crossing in small groups and moving into position. Although the Christian army was surprised by the early Ottoman crossing, they were not necessarily caught unprepared. Upon seeing the Ottoman positions, the Allied command made a sudden change in their battle plans, deciding that the army would under no circumstances cross the stream to pursue the Ottomans, Ooh, thereby okay. eliminating the need for a second battle group. Mm. Okay, smart by the uh, Ottomans, change it, like making the Christians change their tactics here as well. Under threat of encirclement by the Ottomans, the Christian forward units guarding the ford were quickly recalled and used instead to screen the Allied army as it deployed for battle. The Christian artillery once again proved its worth as their volleys managed to halt the Ottoman advance altogether. Mm. The exact deployment of the Christian army is somewhat unclear and is still... 
So once again, they was not able to take advantage of destroying any of the Utes that, uh, the units that come across the river first. They just weren't able to sort of deploy in time. So the Ottomans have stopped the Christians' plan completely. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Like still debated, an unknown number of cannons were placed on the flanks in front of the main battle line, the with both well, batteries being assigned around 500 infantry each. Okay. It appears that the Western Christian infantry, under the command of Schwarzenberg, were divided into five tercios and placed in the center of the first line, with Hungarian and Transylvanian light infantry covering the center right and center left, respectively. Placed in between the tercios was a portion of the Transylvanian hussars commanded by Sigismund Bathory. Mm -hmm. The second line deployed in a wedge formation and was designed to punch straight through the Ottoman ranks. Ooh, okay. Led by Archduke Maximilian III, it consisted of 4,000 Hungarian hussars led by Palfi, their flanks covered by heavy German cavalry mm. with 1,000 riders on the right and 1,300 on the left. They really want to bake through the, the center of the Ottoman line, don't they? At the back of the wedge were 500 of the most heavily armed and armored knights Europe had to offer. These riders, most of whom were from Westphalia, along with their horses, were covered head to toe in full plate armor. The third and final line was led by Tiffenbach and composed mostly of the remaining Hungarian cavalry and infantry, also including a number of mixed units from other allied nations as well. Around 10,000 troops stayed behind to guard the camp. The deployment of the Ottoman army is also unclear, although we do know that a crescent-shaped formation was okay. adopted. It seems that 24,000 cavalry led by Ibrahim Pasha were placed in the center, with artillery batteries on either side placed in intervals, totaling 109 cannons. I'm interested why they were placed in the center, the cavalry. Um... Yeah, maybe I'm just being stupid. In between each interval was a unit of around 2,000 Janissaries who mm -hmm. stood in squares as the narrow terrain prevented them from forming a proper battle line. The left and... It was so narrow they couldn't form a proper battle line. ...and right flanks were occupied by the Anatolian and Rumelian armies respectively. In front of the flanks were the irregular cavalry units with the Tatars on the front right wing. On the other side of the stream, facing northeast, stood the Sultan with the rest of his Janissary infantry, flanked by cavalry on either side and a few artillery pieces to their front. So they don't think that they need all the troops, uh, or is this just sort of a rear guard? Um, does the uh, Mohammed just not want to get involved? Is, is that what it is? Uh, only 20% of the Ottoman army was cavalry. Uh, uh, infantry, sorry. You mean so 80 percent of it was cavalry that's why uh there was sort of that mi middle uh vanguard of cavalry additionally sense, right? a large contingent of cavalry had been sent to the northern passage with orders to wait for an opportune moment and attempt to strike the christian army from the rear and they do it the battle eventually began with the christian first line pushing forward under the cover of artillery fire mm. the flanks of the first line charged ahead and engaged the Ottomans opposite them. However, the Christian right flank, who had enjoyed some initial success, pushed too far and found themselves pressed on two sides as a unit of Janissaries from the Sultan's contingent crossed the stream and joined the fight. Okay. Seeing this, Albert Karai, who was positioned on the left flank, renewed his attack, managing mm. to rout the Tatar cavalry in front of him. Routed them? Really? However, rather than pushing their advantage, the contingent of Sikhli guardsmen under there his command took okay, to looting the corpses of their enemies. This prompted the routing Tatar cavalry to turn back and charge the unsuspecting mm. infantry. Some units of Tatars attempted to swing around the Christian flank and encircle the infantry in the first line. However, Tiffenbach managed to counter this movement with okay. his own cavalry from the third battle line, nice. eventually routing the Tatars. 
the Ottomans positioned at the northern passage now also commenced their attack, mm. although were unable to break through the Christian defenses. With both its flanks in danger of being routed, the slow-moving tercios of the first line finally arrived. The Ottoman cavalry opposing them could do little to stop the wall of pikes as they edged forward slowly. Whoa. Using these moving fortresses as cover, mm. the Hungarian and Transylvanian horsemen of the first line launched lightning strikes against the Ottoman units. The Ottomans were seemingly helpless in the face of the highly trained European army. So what despite being outnumbered on the battlefield, utilized their local superiority to deadly effect. So were the cavalry just sort of coming back in and recharging? Um, and was, was that the reason why they sort of, uh, they were sort of prevailing so well in this fight? Uh, remember the Ottomans had no heavy cavalry at all, so it's all light infantry. When faced in melee combat with heavy armoured knights, the outcome would never go to be in doubt. Yeah, you are you are correct, like um, those heavy cavalry just sort of making absolute uh, mincemeat of the light cavalry there. Whenever the Ottoman cavalry threatened to overwhelm the Christian riders, the hussars would quickly withdraw back through the gaps mm. and behind the protection of their infantry. If the Ottoman cavalry withdrew too far away from the Tercios, the Christian artillery would target Ooh, them, and if they came too close, they exposed themselves to both rifle oh. fire and the sudden charges of the Christian cavalry. Unable to endure such abuse, the Ottoman cavalry under Ibrahim Pasha were eventually routed. That the Christian sense. center continued to push forward, defeating the remaining Janissary units, mm. and capturing all 109 of the Ottoman cannons. Sigismund Bathory then ordered his cavalry to aid the flanks, Attacking the Ottomans from the side. We're halfway through, and I, I, I don't see how, because it looks like the Christians have got the victory. But I can, I, I can just tell it's not going to stay that way for long. What's going to happen? Leading some cavalry from the third line, Tiffenbach also came to the aid of the Christian left flank. After some fighting, what remained of the Ottoman left flank were also eventually routed. The seemingly unstoppable Christian advance mm. was finally halted by a unit of Janissaries who had taken up position at the fortified church. I can imagine that the Ottomans' morale is like just absolutely diminishing as well. The more defeats that they're taking, and the more and more this happens, the more and more they're getting stalled. Not good for their morale. The Christian at all. infantry repeatedly attempted to storm the Ottoman positions, but each time were repelled by the Janissaries. The Christians eventually realized that if they wished to dislodge the stubborn Ottomans from their fortifications, they would need more offensive power than the infantry could provide. This is where it's going to go The Christian wrong. second line was finally brought forward. Under the cover of artillery fire, the steel-clad wedge of men and horses drove forward and crashed into the Ottoman positions. Simultaneously, the Christian infantry had taken oh, up position in the nearby edge, ruined houses and now began indiscriminately firing into the Ottoman mm. ranks. Even under the immense pressure of the combined arms of the Christian infantry, cavalry and artillery, the Janissaries clung desperately to their final remaining bridgehead. It was only after a bloody melee that they were finally routed and forced back across the stream. Upon achieving this okay. great success, however, the Christian commanders now faced a dilemma. Despite the Allied leaders having agreed earlier in the morning that under no circumstance would they cross the stream, the Hungarian and Transylvanian commanders now rode to the Archduke's position, calling on him to press the attack. Mm. Both Maximilian III and Schwarzenberg were hesitant to do so, not wanting to overextend the army. Sigismund Bathory, Albert Karai. Stay on that side of the river. Stay. I and Count Palfi, all seemingly intoxicated with success, however, it, continued to pressure the Archduke, arguing that a complete and total victory was theirs for the taking. No, don't need it. It was also around this time that the Archduke received an incorrect report that the Sultan had already abandoned his army. Oh. With this news, Maximilian III...
Now you're just gonna go. But finally relented and agreed to chase the enemy across the stream. The initial Christian How attempts to cross go? were met with exactly. stiff Ottoman resistance. Exactly right. The attacks of the German and Transylvanian infantrymen being repulsed multiple times. The Christian artillery was eventually brought forward, and under the cover of cannon and rifle fire, the army was finally able to force its way across. The Allied commanders attempted to reform the army into their previous three-line battle formation. However, this was an incredibly difficult task to mm -hmm. accomplish, as not only would the line now have to be rotated a full 90 degrees, Ooh. but there was also only enough room for two lines. Oh. Worst of all, the crossing had not been completed in any organized manner, with the troops of different units being hopelessly intermingled. The army would be... Ex oh, we know. Uh, we, we see where this is going, right? I'm not the only one. Exposed we to attack it as it organized itself, which evidently would take a significant amount of time that the Christians simply did not have. Ibrahim mm. Pasha, having managed to rally a portion of his forces near the okay. northeastern end of the Ottoman camp, saw that the Christian army was in disarray. I mean, and as well, you're going to be like you're going to be rallying people up and coming back. The Grand Vizier hurriedly ordered his contingent to charge the assembling Christian lines. Mm. Lucky for the Christians, however, the Archduke had already managed to reform his cavalry wedge and quickly moved to intercept the incoming Ottoman charge. Can he do it? Can he, can he deal with it? In the ensuing clash, the more heavily armed and armoured European cavalry emerged victorious. The well, impact we that, of their but... charge scattering the Ottoman cavalry Don't in chase. all directions. Don't chase. Ibrahim Pasha himself was pushed back to the very walls okay. of the Ottoman camp. Meanwhile, it seems that the other Allied commanders either realized that it would be impossible to organize their troops in a reasonable amount of time, or that they lost control they of retreat. the troops, who believed that the battle had already been won, and were eager for a chance to plunder the Ottoman camp. As they approached they the camp, the Christian units were still able to form some semblance of a battle okay. line, albeit extremely disorganized. Their advance was met by around 4,000 Janissaries who had fortified themselves along the eastern entrance of the Ottoman camp and were supported by four cannons. Heavily outnumbered, however, this unit was overwhelmed by the charge of the Christian first line of infantry. Unfortunately for the Christians, however, it was here where the front ranks of the Allied army finally lost any semblance of cohesion and discipline as the army of Germans, Austrians, Hungarians and Transylvanians devolved into a mob of looters, mm. scattering amongst the tents in search of plunder, with many even discarding their weapons in their eagerness. A group discarding your weapon just to get some loot and there's still people there you deserve to die you deserve to be stupid that's i'm dumb i am dumb but i am not that dumb do not drop your weapon just for gold i right? like like Come on, man. Of Christian cavalry also managed to force their way into the Ottoman camp from the north, and without facing any resistance, made their way to the Sultan's tent near the southern end of the Ottoman mm, camp, they're going straight where the they Sultan's encountered tent. a unit of Janissaries who were still in good order. The Janissaries first discharged their rifles. Yeah, let's go for then uh, drew their the swords solid. and fell upon the shocked Christian riders, who began to flee. Ugh. It was at this point that the supposedly victorious Christian army began to descend into a rout. In their haste to cross the stream and seize what they believed to be an easy victory, and in part due to the clouds of gunpowder smoke in the air which limited visibility, the Christian commanders had failed to recognize that a significant portion of the Ottoman army was still intact. Yeah, of course it was going to be. In addition to the troops still fighting, there were still 10,000 unengaged Janissary infantry and a large number of Sipahi cavalry at the southern end of the Ottoman camp. Mm. Additionally, the Ottoman reserves and rear guard, along with other rallied units of Tatar and Anatolian cavalry, numbering over 25,000, were also still positioned outside and to the Absolute south of the force. camp. 
absolute Finally, fools. the unit that had been sent to assault the Northern Passage earlier in the battle had also been recalled. And I completely forgot about those. We're now within sight of the Ottoman. Camp. <laughs> the Sultan, who had at first considered fleeing, was persuaded by one of his advisors to remain with the army and continue fighting. Yep. Mehmed III finally took charge, and under his leadership, the remaining fresh units of Janissaries and Sapahi cavalry launched a counterattack. The Sultan also called upon every able-bodied servant and camp follower to take up arms mm. and aid his troops in driving out the Christians from the Ottoman camp. To all those Everybody. that obeyed, he promised Grab to grant the rank and, and salary them. of Sapahi. Wipe them out. The now revitalized Ottoman forces quickly began overwhelming the scattered and sometimes unarmed Christian troops who were in no position to put up any real resistance. No. Simultaneously, the Ottoman units outside the camp also commenced their attack from both the north and the south. It is worth mentioning that while these attacks occurred nearly at the same time, it appears that this was purely by chance and was not mm. necessarily the result of any planning or coordination between the Ottoman commanders. Sometimes fate just gets involved, don't it? As the fleeing Christian infantry began emerging from the Ottoman camp, they ran into their own horsemen, who up to this point were still in battle order and were engaged with the returning Ottoman yeah. units. The sight of the panicked infantry sowed confusion amongst the Allied cavalry units. I mean, it, it would cause so much confusion. As more and so more panicked infantry began spilling out of the camp, That's it. the Christian riders became unnerved and soon, an unstoppable wave of hysteria swept over mm -hmm. the entire Allied army. Everyone runs. A few hundred. And you're on, the, you're on the other side of the river, so you have a narrow pathway to get through. That's it. That's it. Uh, I reckon our... Hazars suddenly broke formation and began to flee. There's no then way a few flags of, of German riders. Within moments, losses. nearly the entire Christian army had routed. The Archduke, along with a bodyguard of three... I mean, how are you going to fuck up like this? How are you going to fuck up like this? Riders fuck's sake! Attempted yeah, to you stem the mass me. route, only to be Not brushed happy. aside by the sea of panic-stricken troops. I'd say it when people do stupid things. Ah! Seeing that his efforts were futile, Maximilian III withdrew to the ford, and there, again haplessly attempted to rally the army. Mm. The only resistance the Ottomans faced as they began running down the Christians was from the contingent of a German prince, Bernard of Anhalt, who unsuccessfully tried to stop the pursuing Ottoman cavalry with 200 Saxon knights. I mean, fair play to that man for fucking trying at least. At least he goddamn tried. Maximilian III, who by now had accepted that the battle was lost, also attempted to cover the retreating army with the Christian artillery. However, after firing two volleys, the artillery crews also abandoned their position. <laughs> they knew, they knew they were like, nah, it's done, it's done lad, we're gone. We're, we gotta go, peace, deuces, we're out of here. See you later. Yeah, you gotta give credit to the Sultan uh, and the men, they didn't give up uh, despite the grim results uh, of the battlefield earlier on in the day. You are hundred percent correct, right? Uh, right? You are hundred percent right and correct, like, and it should be mentioned. He needs to have his dues. And the men. Many Allied troops were slaughtered by the Ottomans as they attempted to cross the narrow ford. Some even drowning as they climbed over one another in desperation. Mm. A Transylvanian officer recounts that bodies were piled so high in some places along the street. I'm really surprised that they got across the river so well. I thought they were going to get tunnel necked or something. It was going to be very difficult to get their men across that river uh, at a fast pace. So I thought they were going to suffer a lot more sort of uh, casualties. Dream that one could cross without ever having touched either mud or water. The only saving grace for the Christian army, however, was that the Ottomans, who were likely too exhausted to continue the pursuit, chased the Christian troops only to the edge of mm. the stream. Understandable. They must be absolutely shattered, exhausted. Like God knows what they. they yeah, it was a. It was a. 
It was a nighttime assault as well. It was a nighttime assault. So they started like what? Like in the middle of the night the day before? Like, yeah. Nah, these boys are Even with this disastrous shattered. route, modern historians believe that had there been any commander to do so, it would have been possible to rally and reorganize the Allied army within mm. the protection of the fortified Christian camp. However, upon seeing the Allied troops looting their own camp, the Archduke dared not go inside and instead abandoned the battlefield. I want to scream and I want to get up and I want to do crazy shit. They started looting their own camp, started stealing. It's because they had so many different ethnicities, you know, so many different people from other places that the loyalties just weren't there. The loyalties were just not there at all. So they started stealing from the other people that were supposed to be helping. The only commander to actually have returned to the camp was Count Palfi. However, by the time he arrived at around midnight, the army had already all but disintegrated. Realizing this, the remaining Christian troops admitted defeat, silently gathered their belongings, and returned home. On the Ottoman side, the Sultan at first struggled to regain control of his scattered army, only managing to do so a day after the last of the Christian forces had been yeah, drawn. Yeah, he However, no as it was now late October, and with their logistical capacity already stretched to its limit, they were unable to take advantage of the victory. Large amounts of equipment and material was left behind on the battlefield, as the Ottomans were unable to take much with them as they returned home, the rest having been abandoned by the Christians in their haste. Okay, I didn't know that. You would have thought that the Ottomans might have took those with them. The fact they left those because they were so exhausted The Battle of Gerezdesh well. proved to be the Ottomans' last great victory mm. in Central Europe. Having failed to achieve any significant change in the status quo of the region, is it really that big of a victory then? It seems that the tens of thousands of casualties suffered on both sides were ultimately for nothing. Thank you so much for watching. If you no more footnotes in this one either. Once again, amazing series by History Marsh. And I really, really enjoyed just doing this little walk with you guys tonight. That was really, really good. Nice little free parter all over and done with.